This is Bob Fatrakis bringing you the other side of the news. And the other side of Tuesday's election. We're in the studio here. It's Sunday. Hopefully you'll be hearing this tomorrow, Monday, six days after the Trump triumph. I'm in the <laughs> studio with senior editor of the Columbus Free Press and historian Harvey Wasserman. Harvey, welcome to the other side of the news. All right, Bob. Good to be with you. Good to have this out on the Internet. Be good. Oh, this will actually uh, broadcast uh, around the county as well as going to the Internet. Good, good, good. So uh, your initial thoughts uh, five days after the election. Well, once again, we've had a – this is the sixth time in U.S. history where the rightful winner of the presidency has been deprived. We were just talking about the 1800 election, which is not usually discussed. Thomas Jefferson won the 1800 election in the Electoral College, 74 to 65. And if um, uh, he had not gotten the three-fifths bonus from all the slaves, it would have been 65-62 against him. Uh, but I don't have a number on the popular vote. That's actually going to be pretty hard to get because it wasn't a popular vote. It was done in legislatures and things like that. So, well, there'll never be a popular vote from the 1800 election, just like there'll never be one from the 2004 election either. Um, but uh, in 1824, uh, Andrew Jackson was the rightful winner in the popular vote. And John Quincy Adams became president in 1876. Samuel Tilden won 1888. Um, Benjamin Harrison, and then of course in 2000 Al Gore. And now it appears that Hillary Clinton is about to vastly overtake Al Gore's 500,000 vote victory in 2000. And um, the um, um, uh, some of the reporting has uh, says that she's going to wind up with about a two million vote victory over Donald Trump. And all these morons on the, uh, you know, on the cable news and the, and the networks are bringing their, you know, tearing their hair out about how they misread the election. They didn't misread the election. She, she won in a landslide, basically. Two million votes is a significant uh, margin of victory. And they, and they haven't even, they're not even done counting California, Oregon, and Washington, where she had enormous um, uh, uh, margins of victory, as well uh, as, as you mentioned with the provisional ballots most of which are probably in the trash by now, but some of which will be counted. So, you know, it's ridiculous. It, it, not only is it, did she win, but she won on the land side. Well, the uh, provisionals, uh, there's 10 days to count those. So states like Ohio and uh, Michigan, uh, you don't put those in the total on election night. And uh, uh, clearly uh, the votes coming out of the um, uh, West Coast that haven't been counted yet. Uh, as well, is it safe to say that they did miscalculate the electoral vote? I suppose, yeah. Most of the, uh, I mean, I was seeing in the New York Times they had 80, 90 percent certainty that she was going to win the electoral vote, the electoral college. Everybody assumed, they all assumed, that North Carolina, Ohio, um, Pennsylvania, well, Michigan and Wisconsin would at and, least lean towards her, and Florida too. And Florida, maybe. yeah. Now, we, we have the exit polls that were available. Uh, these were downloaded by Jonathan Simon. So here's the unadjusted exit polls. This is what they were going on. Uh, for example, in Ohio, toss-up, uh, the exit poll said 47 for Clinton, 47.1 for Trump. The final vote count was 52.1 Trump, 43.5 Clinton. This constitutes a 8.6% difference and an 8.5% red shift. Yeah. That is a positive shift over the exit polls, which are supposed to be accurate within uh, uh, two to three uh, percentage points. Yeah. Uh, in the U.S., uh, we had a cluster factor that increases them somewhat, but uh, these are clearly outside the so-called margins of error, which actually would call the results into question. Well, the problem is that the, the corporate media, the CNN, all these places, including MSNBC, including Rachel Maddow, uh, cannot face the reality of electronic election theft. You know, they're, they're yapping here and there. And, and finally, I mean, thanks to you and me and Greg Pallast and Bev Harris and a few others, the media has been paying attention to disenfranchisement. 
mass disenfranchisement. And Michelle Alexander is, of course, Jim, new Jim Crow, has forced people to look at that. But they still can't look at the election theft. And I've got to say, the most absurd moment in the entire aftermath of the election was Michael Moore on Joe Scarborough, Mo- Morning Joe, saying that the, the, the voters in Michigan were so angry with Obama and, and um, Hillary Clinton that they came to the polls and they voted for everybody on the ticket except the president. He says somewhere between 70 and 90,000 people in Michigan had fully filled out um, votes, uh, ballots, but they didn't vote for the president. I mean, come on, Michael. Wake up and smell the, uh, the voter theft for God, vote theft, for God's sakes. We saw, Bob, you and I saw this in New Mexico in 2004. It's absurd. Well, we saw it in Ohio in uh, 04 as well. Uh, some of that, that, that is the undervote. Uh, but what we also saw in Ohio was the one punchers for Bush. You know, uh, <laughs> yeah. Down there in Warren County, you had about 10,000 of them. Apparently, people showed up at, at the polls and just one punched and, uh, and left, uh, which was really statistically uh, improbable. Right. I'd like to ask Michael Moore, what other states... In addition to Michigan, were there 70,000 people who showed up and voted the entire ballot but didn't vote for the president? I mean, come on. Clerk of courts? <laughs> yeah. County coroner? <laughs> <laughs> or, yeah, or, or Ohio Supreme Court, as happened and in And they refused to vote even though they had a party on the right, the Libertarians, or a Green Party to send right. that vote to. They just simply refused to vote. Absolutely. So, you know, I mean, I, you know, and then they're, uh, they're going to start attacking Jill Stein. Someone came to me and said, well, well, they already is- have repeatedly. Uh, and this whole notion is that both Stein and, and Gary Johnson. Johnson elected Trump. But uh, no assumption that uh, most, to be quite frank, Harvey, most Greens I know consider Hillary Clinton a war criminal. Now, right. granted, some of them may fear Trump more. Uh, but on the basic foreign policy stuff, possibilities of nuclear war with Russia, being a war criminal, uh, taking bribes from the House of Saud to the foundation, influence peddling to help create ISIS. Donald Trump didn't do that. So this thought that somehow these Greens, if they didn't vote for Jill, would have somehow, you know, this more than a million, would have wanted Hillary Clinton, is most of them, you know, Found her uh, to be the uh, to be a criminal. They agreed with uh, Trump that she was crooked Hillary. And now I, that didn't mean they liked Trump. No, no, no. So I, and also I have to say it. I know you're going to get hate mail. We're going to get all sorts of re- reaction to this. The immediate response of the victory of, uh, of the selection of Donald Trump has been the death of the TPP. Now, obviously, he's going to have the Trans-Pacific Partnership. Obviously, he'll bring it back probably in a form that's even worse than the one we got now. But for the time being, uh, had Hillary won, I'm pretty sure it would have gotten through. Um, you know, Obama would have pushed it through with her. She claimed to oppose it, but come on, we know that wasn't going to happen. So um, at any rate, no, it, but it's ugly. You know, uh, the women uh, of this country, I, I just had a vision today of a, that uh, 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 Trump will do something truly abominable and uh, maybe we'll have a national strike of women. That would be that would be really cool. The only thing that the only p- tool we have left in the box, frankly, you know, he's got the uh, the Republicans have the the House, the Senate, soon the Supreme Court. They got the media. I mean, the only tool left is a national strike. And um, you know, at some point, uh, I've been vastly encouraged by the huge size of the anti-Trump uh, rallies. I looked at the one in L.A. on Wilshire Boulevard. It looked like about a mile long. I mean, these are really big, and you know, it's basically going to have to be the millennials, Bob. You and I will be the old age home, and they'll, they'll, uh, <laughs> they'll be but, picking up the slack. But here. they're very kind. Most of the millennials, uh, their bumper sticker, "Mean people suck." They may come and take us out of the nursing home, <laughs> yeah. put us, put us in a wheelchair, and wheel us down the street. Absolutely, that would be really great. So, uh, no, it's ugly. It's really ugly. Uh, but, um, you know, uh, it's touchy to say this, but t- Hillary Clinton was a terrible candidate. And I'm already, st- you know, a woman, it's got to be a woman next time. 
Uh, first of all, I, don't th- I think Trump at most will be a one-term president. Michael Moore is predicting he won't finish out his term. And since he was right about saying Trump would win, I'm going to give him some slack here. Uh, maybe when he goes up on trial for rape, uh, that, will, that will have an impact, you know. So, um, uh, but it w- it's likely, I will say this, by the way, um, this is, if, if Obama lives out, out his term, and we hope he does, of course, um, this will be the first time in U.S. history since 1800 to 1824 that we had three consecutive two-term presidencies. Now, the, the, right after that was the stolen election of 1824 and total chaos with uh, John Quincy Adams. So if the follow is true, Trump will be a one-term president, and then uh, someone else will come in, hopefully somebody better than Andrew Jackson, who is a terrible pig, but, you know, um, we'll see what happens. But, God, we got to work it out for us. If, if it was just Trump, it would be one thing. But with the House, the Senate, and now the Supreme Court locked up, and, you know, the first thing he's going to do, by the way, is go against net neutrality. He's already said that. He's going he's gonna to attack the Internet. And because that's that's why I mean, it's like he thought the mainstream media was rigged. So he's going to attack the alternative media. Uh, absolutely doesn't make any sense. Walter. So uh, let's t- take a look at uh, some of the other states. Uh, we've mentioned uh, Harvey, uh, North Carolina, for example, the exit polls showed Clinton winning 48 to 6, 48.6 to 46.5. Uh, that is an estimated projected uh, margin of error of, of 2.1. Uh, on the other hand, she loses. Uh, tri- uh, Trump gets 50.6, she gets 46.7. So this is an unexplained red shift of 6% of the vote to Donald Trump in North Carolina. Well, one thing I think you and I agree probably happened is that the um, a lot of the uh, people of color, blacks and Hispanics, who went in to vote in places like North Carolina, Florida, Ohio, Michigan, Pennsylvania, and Wisconsin, uh, did vote or thought they voted and probably voted provisionally. And uh, the next thing we know, their votes are in the trash. And, um, and uh, of course, a lot of these votes were also eliminated by electronic means. We know in Ohio that more than half the votes are cast on electronic voting machines, which have absolutely no monitorability or uh, accountability or any recourse whatsoever. So, um, you know, in an election nationally that's conducted on electronic voting machines that are totally corporate property and can be manipulated by a secretary of state and a, and a governor, with no problem whatsoever, um, you know, this kind of stuff is going to happen, as happened in Ohio 2004, Florida 2000, and now um, um, nationwide 2016. So there's no surprise there. What's, ast- what's astounding to me still is that nobody in the major media, the corporate media, is willing to deal with this, not even magazines like The Nation or Alternet, um, you know, uh, at Daily Coast, you and I are still blacklisted from Daily Coast for suggesting it might have been a problem that Mitt Romney had a financial interest in the electronic voting machines in Cincinnati. You know, it wasn't a problem <laughs> with Forbes no. or Daily uh, <laughs> Investment News or uh, Business Daily, just a problem with a progressive blog right this is uh, i gotta do a quick break uh here this is wcrs your community voice 98.3 and 102.1 and wgrn our eco-feminist station at 94.1 so we got an eco-feminist station now harvey covers the whole county all right, we you like can listen that. to Amy Goodman. Uh, Harvey's occasionally on that show. Well, it's good. It's good to have a, a diversity finally in the airwaves, and um, it's going to be interesting to see what uh, Trump. Trump, ha- how Trump, that's what you're saying. Trump's going to go after net neutrality. Yeah, he's, he t- he's already denounced net neutrality. I mean, they, you know, there's money to be made. They're going to go after Social Security. Uh, uh, Paul Ryan is already talking about converting Medicare to a uh, voucher system. Um, you know, these guys see, oh, and they're also going to, uh, I guarantee you, they're going to move to sell the national parks. I mean, that's going to come, and that's going to be heavy. 
and uh, hopefully the, some of them will be branded with the <laughs> Trump moniker. <laughs> yes, right. The Trump Canyon National Park in Arizona there. And the, uh, there'll be uh, Yosemite Trump. Forget that. <laughs> the Forget giant, the, the giant. Trump, he wants, he wants the geyser there in Yellowstone. Right, and the Trump Sequoia All the Park. Faithful. <laughs> no, it's going to be ugly. I mean, everything that we believe in is going to be tested, really seriously. I mean, you know, and of course they're going to go after Roe v. Wade. That'll be really interesting. You know, Trump was recently asked, uh, very recently, I think within the last couple of days, he wants to have criminal punishments for women who have abortions. And somebody asked him from the audience, uh, well, shouldn't, uh, shouldn't men who are responsible for the pregnancies or partly responsible also be face criminal punishments? And he had a very simple one-word response, which was no. So, you know. It's they grabbed the stuff fairly and squarely <laughs> yeah, right. based on the laws of nature. That's right. And, and trumpetudinous. So, I don't know. It's going to be um, – Pretty tough, uh, but it's definitely going to be clarifying, um, more clarifying probably than George W. Bush, uh, which was a nightmare. But people who think that uh, Trump is going to hold back because he lost by two million votes, that's, that's not even close to the case. You know, when Bush came in after all that contention over the uh, 2000 election, they didn't miss a beat, man. They 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 just ran forward with whatever. But isn't that they part had. of the strategy? You know, you're expected to be cautious, and if you just, you know, full speed ahead. Well, only the Democrats. Uh, do you that. know, you know, as we recall. Oh yeah, the Democrats. Well, Obama. Hi, I actually legitimately won. Why don't I like have a cabinet of people that are conservative and throw in some Republicans right. and be incredibly cautious. Right. And when, I, when I'm going to decide whether or not to go into Afghanistan, uh, I'm going to have uh, nine meetings and not include a single person from the peace movement uh, or anybody that knows anything about Afghanistan on the ground. That was really obnoxious. And, of course, the, the tenure, uh, the endless, um, uh, worthless, useless, meaningless uh, con uh, uh, conflict in Afghanistan is one of the reasons that Hillary lost. I mean, people are just weary of war. And I got to say, Trump played the peace card in his own way um, to the extent that a Donald Trump Republican could play the peace card. I mean, he claimed to be against the Iraq war. But she did a pretty good job of showing he wasn't. But And, um, uh, you know, maybe that will have some restraining um, uh, uh, reigns on him doing another one of those wars. Um, he claims to not want another nuclear war with Russia or another Cold War. We'll see about that. You know, um, I don't know, maybe he'll even pardon Edward Snowden. <laughs> Who knows? All right. We've also got Pennsylvania, Harvey. Okay. Clinton was supposed to win f with 50.5% of the vote over Trump's 46.1%. Instead, Trump won by 1%, 48.7 over 47.7. This is a unexplained red shift from the exit polls to the actual vote of 5.4%. So, again, in these battleground states, you see uh, Trump in North Carolina, Trump in Pennsylvania, Trump in Florida, where Clinton was supposed to win 477 to 46.4, you see Trump winning uh, by 49.1 to 47.7. Another well, I think, unexplained uh, shift to 2.7%. I, I, think, I think once again in Florida, of course, all those Jews came out and voted again for Pat Buchanan. So uh, they, that, <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that explains that. I'm sure we'll hear something like that on, on the uh, corporate media. You know. But until uh, anybody in the, in the mainstream you know, big time media, including the Nation magazine and um, Alternate and uh, uh, other websites on the left, is willing to deal with uh, the realities of electronic election theft. This is all going to be, you know, uh, uh, Greg has done a great job of uh, Greg Palast of exposing the disenfranchisement of vast n numbers of people of color, primarily black and Hispanic. Uh, thanks in war. He hasn't talked much about the drug war, but it has a lot to do with the drug war, which Mich mm -hmm. Michelle Alexander has exposed. And in our own book, uh, Strip and Flip Election of 2016, which we're going to now call the Strip and Flip Death of American Democracy, 
Um, you know, we, we point out that there is um, a history dating back to 1675 with the pretty much invention of American slavery, of making sure that blacks and whites are separated and that blacks can't vote. And this, this election was as bad as any after all these years, um, I, you know, that, uh, of, of disenfranchising people of color. But um, um, there, the additional flipping capabilities of the people in power uh, until those are dealt with, we're not going to get anywhere. And again, the, the great oddity of all this, or irony, is that um, in at least 13 of these states, uh, we have unexplained shifts to Trump that suggest election irregularities. These would not be considered legitimate elections outside the U.S. Uh, but uh, one of the states, New York, had a 6.1% shift to Hillary Clinton. And that pattern in the primary, uh, which we're now seeing for Trump, the red shift, we saw a Clinton shift in 12 states when she ran against Bernie Sanders. Right. Well, the, the, um, the shift from uh, Trump to Hillary in New York must have been a holdover from what they did in... Uh, they forgot to reprogram the fix. Right, they forgot to refix the... fix the machine. <laughs> or it could be... Uh, Disenfranchisement. Dominion, which is in that state, uh, cited SOE. Uh, but Dominion, the former remnant, uh, you recall it went from Debolt uh, to changing its name because of the uh, suspicious behavior and later a worldwide pattern of fraud caused it to change its name to Premier. It was then bought up by es and s and then part of it was spit out because of uh, laws on monopolies, and it was in uh, New York State. But uh, as we look at, at this question, they also gave money uh, to the Clinton Foundation. Oh, uh, well, As there did HIG HIG, or HIG Capital, uh, which owns, uh, of course, Hart Inner Civic. And is linked to the Romneys. Yes, so you have... <laughs> You know, I, I'm trying to figure out why exactly do voting machine companies give money to a known candidate? Why not? <laughs> I mean, you know. Maybe she'll buy them up. It's you know. called hedging your bets, you, know, you, you can know. flip it and make a little profit. Romney yeah, doesn't need it this year. Absolutely. So, um, you know, it's all a, a wash in corruption, and that's why people didn't like Hillary Clinton. And, um, you know, uh, and then it, it, she was – well, let's put it this way. Donald Trump was the only Republican that Hillary could have beaten. I mean, if she'd have run against Jeb Bush or John Kasich, someone sane, well, I won't go that far, someone who appeared to be sane, right? Um, uh, I, I think Jeb Bush would have crushed her in a, in a regular election, frankly. Well, I'm wondering how many of the, you know, there are 17 Republicans, how many of the other 16 she should could have actually Beat. I think Rubio could have beat her, probably. Huckabee, I don't know. You know, it doesn't matter at this point. But uh, she would have lost to, definitely lost to Trump and to uh, Jeb Bush and John Kasich. And, and if Trump had uh, taken Kasich as his vice presidential candidate, um, um, he would have trounced. I think he would have trounced her. Frankly, I mean, Mike Pence was just another anti-feminist corporate thug. Um, uh, John Kasich. Um, is not an anti-feminist by any stretch. I mean, we, he's got plenty of far problems, but that's not one of them. He's got two daughters, twin daughters like me. And um, um, if Trump, if he did, Trump did, uh, by the way, offer Kasich the vice presidency, and Kasich uh, turned him down. So, um, you know, this is a situation where we're looking at uh, Trump being the only candidate she could have beat. And, um, I'm, well, I mean, you know, somebody absurd like Huckabee or well, Chris Christie. Fia Fiorino. I don't know. You think she could have beat Chris Christie? Oh, I, yeah, yeah. Think, no, uh, he's, he's an abomination. Chris, Christie would have been worse than Trump, actually. Um, and, and he's about to – he's facing serious legal problems because of this uh, – what he did with the George Washington Bridge, sticking my daughter in traffic. She was in Teaneck. But, you know, it's um, – uh, uh, Trump was – uh, really somebody that she should have walked all over, just like Al Gore should have walked all over uh, George W. Bush, you know. But uh, he took uh, Lieberman as his vice president. As soon as Al Gore took Vi Lieberman to run for vice president with him, I knew he was going to lose. And, um, you know, and look who, who Hillary took for vice president. A total non-entity, added nothing to the ticket, although he may have helped her carry Virginia. That's, that's a possibility, actually. So, uh, but, uh, you know, you and I, Bob, were on this crusade still, 
uh, when we broke these stories in 2004. No one was paying to uh, any attention to electronic voting machines. We have a few. We've we've picked up a few acolytes along the way, but it's still um, uh, a third rail. No, still nobody in the corporate media, including Michael Moore, uh, will talk about electronic voting machines. It's astounding. I mean, his statement that all these people in Michigan didn't vote for president on ballots that they filled out otherwise because they were mad about the water in Flint. It's insane. And, and, you know, all these red shifts you're showing in the, in the exit polls, clearly a product of electronic manipulation. So, I don't know. Um, well, that's the flip that goes with the strip, Harvey. Yes, indeed. Absolutely. And it's not a strip of bacon. <laughs> <laughs> and Harvey, who once stripped for Hustler magazine. I know. I, I did write a piece about aspartame for Hustler, though, which well, remains I, the... I think, didn't we have uh, three articles in Hustler? Yeah, yeah. Uh, we had a couple. We had a couple. couple of, of yes, stories. that's right. Uh, absolutely. Yeah, the October surprise. Yeah. Well, this was an October surprise. You know, Hillary's out there yelling about the FBI, and I, I guess there's some some justification to it. But well, it you know, did, she, uh, the timing was peculiar. Yes, and uh, you know the the appointment of a guy like Comey by a Democratic president like Obama. I mean, come on, you know, uh, what do you got to do that? I mean, look, we're going to look back at the presidencies of uh, Bill Clinton and Barack Obama, and we're going to say, what did they do? What did they actually accomplish? We got Obamacare, which is, you know... They uh, hollowed out the industrial core of the absolutely, country, Harvey. Absolutely, they did. And, you know, a lot of people, a lot of working-class whites voted against Hillary Clinton, rightfully, because of NAFTA. And these people's lives were ruined by NAFTA. And as it would have been worse with the TPP, so we'll see what happens now. But um, there's no doubt, Bob, you and I, we have witnessed and are documenting, as no one else has been able to a, uh, or willing to, a, another stolen election. Another stripped election, has, as Greg Powis has shown, and another flipped election, as Bev Harris would say. But we, we, we're putting the total package out there, and uh, we just got to keep doing it until somebody finally picks it up. Okay, well, I think uh, people will be looking uh, at it. Uh, you want to tell them about any of your uh, websites in the last uh, few seconds? Well, we got the strip and flip selection. The strip and flip death of American democracy is our next book, Bob. It should be out in December, hopefully before Christmas. Which is well, an will be expanded out edition of the strip and flip selection with a new, uh, a new award-winning story. Uh, yes, we won the uh, most censored story from... Yeah, Project uh, Censored, number four in the world. And what's it on, Harvey? It's on the strip and flip <laughs> destruction of American uh, democracy. Election rigging. Uh, you can go to freepress.org to check out uh, the work of... Uh, Harvey Wasserman and myself under Fitrakis Wasserman. And uh, what about your Solar Topian? Solar Topia is still there. I'm going to be Solar Topianizing Cal- Southern California soon, hopefully. And uh, but Donald Trump is a sworn enemy of s- solar power. We got our work cut out for us. We did win. We did defeat an anti-solar referendum in Florida, thankfully. And there, and we did in this election, by the way, legalize a nut pot in enough states that now more than half of the countries, in, okay, more than half of the states in the United States have either legal or medical marijuana. So let's celebrate that. Well, let's end on that note. Thanks a lot, Harvey Wasserman. Thank you, Bob. Welcome and Suzanne, the, our great engineer. Welcome to the other side of the news.